Good morning, everybody. Glad to see you this morning. We want to welcome you to the White Oak Springs Baptist Church Sunday School online class. Great to see everyone out. It's a beautiful day. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today we're going to end up our series on Proverbs. Oh, wow, I'm so sad. A whole month we've been in Proverbs. Uh, third, second, third, fourth uh, Sundays in June. We've been studying the book of Proverbs, looking at the wisdom of God. Today we're going to recap, get our last scripture, and uh, on next Sunday we'll start a whole new series. Still about wisdom, still about God's wisdom. But this time, next week, we'll be going into the uh, New Testament, the Gospel writers. Today, our title is Invitation to Wisdom. The Wisdom Feast. Come to the Feast of the Lord. Our scripture this morning is Proverbs, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 6. Skip to verses 8 through 10. Finish up with 13 through 18. Proverbs, the ninth chapter. This first section of Proverbs 1 through 9 uh, was specifically assigned to King Solomon. We know that King Solomon re received his wisdom from God. God asked him when he was a young man in a dream what it is that you want to have. And uh, King Solomon, he didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for silver. He didn't ask for gold. But he asked God to give him wisdom, and God gave him that wisdom. And that's what we have on record today. Uh, just to recap, regroup, and review some of the main scriptures we've been following this month. Proverbs 1 and 7 talks about the fear of the Lord. Uh, the fear of the Lord is knowledge. And uh, today we're going to have Proverbs again in the ninth chapter. Well, that term, the fear of the Lord, has come up so much since we started this study. And it's going to come up again today. Another uh, recap scripture that we talked about was uh, godly wisdom and the benefits of godly wisdom. Well, first, I want to go back and talk a little bit about godly wisdom, how that's different from worldly wisdom. You know, godly wisdom comes from God. It supersedes all the wisdom in the world. Uh, God wisdom, uh, it comes from God, and it gives you insight, understanding. It gives you knowledge, the correct application of knowledge. You know, a lot of people have head knowledge, but they don't have common sense. But godly wisdom is the correct application of knowledge. And understanding is having discernment and uh, insight into what God is speaking to us this morning. Uh, other benefits we talked about in the previous weeks, we talked about how uh, the benefits of God is just like uh, better than silver and gold, better than rubies and diamonds, um, sweeter, as in Psalms 118. The wisdom of God is sweeter than the honeycomb. Uh, when we read in different Psalms, talking about the unsearched for riches in Christ as presented in Romans 11, 33. And, um, you know, wisdom, godly wisdom is the way that people should go. And godly wisdom has been portrayed as a lady, as a virtuous woman, as a lady from God who's calling out, calling out to us to come and receive godly wisdom. This morning, we're going to talk, focus more on lady wisdom, and then we're going to talk about the opposite of lady wisdom, which would be, you know, Miss Folly. <laughs> we're going to talk about those opposite and opposing views in just a moment, getting into our scripture. But Proverbs, um, this ninth chapter that we're studying, it concludes the first section uh, that will describe, as I said before. So there are some things here that we really need to unpack. So let's get right into the scripture. Let's begin reading. Proverbs, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 6. I'll read the first set. I'm going to read from King James, and then do a discussion. I may consult the NIV. King James, verse 1. 
wisdom hath builded her house. She hath hung out her seven pillars. She hath killed a beast. She hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. She hath sent forth her maidens. She cried upon the highest places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that one understandeth, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish, and live and go in the way of understanding. Those are the first six verses from Proverbs 9 chapter. So Lady Wisdom here is portrayed as a wisdom. Uh, she is preparing her house. She's having a big feast. She's inviting others to come. Now, the first verse says, Wisdom has built her house. She has set up seven pillars. You know, uh, a pillar is a, a, is a builder's term. People who build houses, they understand what pillars are. They are construction beams that hold up, that connect the, uh, the pillar from the bottom of the foundation, connected to the ceiling, holding the structure up. So we see that Lady Wisdom, Wisdom has built her house on the foundation of seven pillars. That seven number of perfection, seven represents the number of God. And uh, I did a little uh, research on these seven pillars. What could they have represented? Well, we know it represents God because the number seven is the perfect, the number of perfection. God uh, uh, created heaven and earth in six days, but on that seventh day, he rested. So that seven is looked at the number of perfection. So I did a little research and I found that in uh, James chapter 3, and I don't want to talk too much about the book of James because that's going to be another study we're going to do in, in August about the wisdom from the book of James. But if you look at uh, James 3, 17, there are, he mentions seven uh, attributes. He mentions seven components of wisdom. First of all, wisdom is pure and it's peaceful and it's gentle. A wisdom uh, is easy to be entreated and pleasant. You can approach a person with wisdom. Uh, it's without hypocrisy. Wisdom is real. You'll meet the real person. And, uh, and just easy going. Peaceful, pure. Those are the seven pillars. That is the foundation. You know, I think it talks about in the, the New Testament, in the Gospel writers, there's a parable where Jesus said, you know, there were uh, two men who built a house, you know. One built his house upon a rock. So when the storms come, you know, he had a rock solid foundation. And another man built his house, his foundation made of sand. Well, you know, when the wind and the storm started blowing and the wind started blowing, his house fell down because he was built upon sand. Well, we should build our houses just like Lady Will of Wisdom has founded her foundation, those seven pillars with God. Those seven pillars is built upon that rock. And who's that rock? First Corinthians tells us that rock is Jesus. So we know that's who we build our foundation upon. Amen. So Lady Wisdom, she's preparing this huge feast. There's another parable in the Bible where Jesus said there was a great man. Uh, he was very rich and he prepared a huge feast. And then he sent his servants out, compelling, telling others to come in, go in the highways, go in the byways, and, and get people to come to the feast. <laughs> Come to the table of the feast of the Lord. So we hear Lady Wisdom here. She's preparing her feast. She's killed her beast. And these are her, that's her food. She's made with her hands. Uh, she had mingled her wine. That's an old uh, expression from ancient times. Let me see how the NIV uh, says she has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. What they do, they get you know, the, the best wine and mix it with a little water and have it, you know, to have a good taste to it and, and get it ready for her guests. She has furnished her table. 
So you can see this, this woman is virtuous. She's preparing. She's ready. And verse uh, 4 says, who so? I'm not. Verse 3. I'm sorry. I'm getting a little skip. Verse 3, she sent forth her maids. She sent on the high place and cried out. NIV says she has sent out her servants and she calleth from the high points of the city. Come, come to the feast of the Lord. You know, when you look at Romans, the eighth chapter, uh, the verses 30 there, there is a very, they call it the golden gospel. Amen. Because it talks about how God had known with his foreknowledge of who he had predestined and who he had predestined, him, he called it. Yes, sir. God called it. <laughs> He's calling. You know, you ever been in your life where you felt like something was missing? I know there's a lot of folk out there that's got a missing puzzle, an uh, uh, emptiness. That's God calling you. Yes, yes. You to accept Jesus Christ, that would be the Lord of your whole life. Some of us, you know, we're social Christians. We'll come hang out in church and see what everybody's wearing and see what they're talking about. And that's on Sunday. Okay. But through the week, uh, you know, they ain't even thinking about God. But I beg you, take God home with you. Invite him to every part of your life. He's calling. When I was a little girl, you know, I learned how to play the piano. And the first song I had to learn to play for Sunday school. Yeah, we had a song called, uh, Can You Hear the Savior Call? I said, oh, hell, I know somebody out there know what I'm talking about. Y'all folks may not. But that's what the song said. I can hear my Savior call. He said, now, if you come and go with me, with me. He said, I'll go with you all the way. I can hear my Savior call. So here, Lady Wisdom is sitting on a high place. She's got the call of God calling out. Mm. And who she's calling? Well, let's take a look at verse 4. Now, this is a verse that people kind of wonder about. It says, uh, who was so? It's simple. The NIV says, let all who are simple come. Well, Frida, you calling somebody simple? Well, I didn't say it. The Bible said there's some folk <laughs> that are so green and naive to the point that they just, you know, at least not get it. I would say that would be young people, but you know, I see some old folk with gray hair and they head. Wow. This simple. Wow. You know, I mean, just empty mind, empty head. Oh, come on, come on now. See, we got to get it right. We got to heed the call of God because He called us for a purpose. You look at that Romans 8. Uh, Chapter 8, verse 30. Talk about a God who he foreknew, which he knows everybody. He knew us before the foundation of the world. He knows what we're going to do, but he's trying to call you to give you the opportunity on your own then to come into the full knowledge of his presence, of his glory. And he has called you for work. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You may not be a preacher. You may not be a teacher, but God has worked for you. But Lady Wilson, she's calling these young folks. She's calling the simple. She's calling the naive. She's calling. And she's saying in verse 4, you know, come in. If, if you need understanding, now all of us need understanding. What's that word understanding? That's one of those terms we've had all month long. Wisdom, the correct uh, application of knowledge, which is the truth of God being with uh, understanding. Here's a scripture I, I wanted to read for a pretty good while I had read, but it says in Proverbs 7, uh, 4 and 7, Proverbs 4 and 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing, and in all you again, get understanding. She's presenting understanding. That's discernment. That's insight. You know, you have some people that have a lot of knowledge, you know, and maybe some wisdom but they don't know how to connect the dots. They don't know how to uh, 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 discern, oh, is this from God? Mm, I don't know. And uh, I don't know what to do. No, you certainly don't. You need godly wisdom. You need lady wisdom. She's here to counsel you. We talked about last week how 
the counsel of God. He'll be a great counselor for you. And she's here to help those, to give them insight and discernment. And verse 5, in the, NIV, uh, the King James says, come eat of my bread. The NIV says, come eat my food and drink the wine I have prepared. Come eat of my bread. You know, we say in the Lord's Prayer, <clears throat> you know, give us this day our daily bread, you know. And, and I'm sure that that's referred to physical nourishment, but I'm really positive it's talking about the word of God. You know, uh, uh, it says in Deuteronomy, you know, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So we need this godly bread here. Uh, <clears throat> and she goes on to say, forsake the foolish. Oh my goodness, the foolish. Last week we talked about, uh, I think we did a comparison with the foolish and the wise, you know. The, the foolish, you know, some folk are just dead. We're going to talk about in future verses. They, they, uh, uh, here, the translation is calling the foolish like zombies. They like dead men walking. You ever seen this group? You know, be careful who you hang together with. That's old folks and young folk. I, I, I was a uh, young, you know, I'm a young adult. And I, you know, have a fan friends out there waiting in the car me while I run in the house for a few moments. And my mom, she give them that old, you know, that Christian Baptist eye, I call them. She said, who are them folks out there? And I said, well, mama, you know, they're my friends. She said, what they doing? I said, well, mama, you know, I don't do the things they do. You know, I just hang with them. And, you know, she said, birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> Be careful who you hanging out with. Foolish, forsake the foolish dead man, but, but go in the way of understanding. God's understanding is spiritual discernment. God's understanding is the light. Jesus is the light. Now, our favorite scripture we like to say around here, you know, thy word, Lord, is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. You know, and, and that's what we are desiring. This is what Lady Williams Wisdom is offering in the first six verses. Amen? Amen. Well, let's skip now to the next set of verses, verses 8 through 10. <clears throat> now, here we've got a lot of contrast and comparison. Solomon wrote these uh, proverbs. He didn't just write them. He used this little literary tools to see can't you get like the lady wisdom, she's what we call a metaphor. Wisdom really, the divine wisdom comes from God. Divine wisdom shows up as Jesus Christ in John 1.1. 1, 1. But we have this metaphor of wisdom being personified as a lady. So here, Solomon's using compare and contrast. I'm going to read verses 8 through 10 from the King James, and then we can discuss... <clears throat> Uh, from another version. Verse 8, reprove not a scorn, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understand. I kind of laugh when I read that. That's one of my favorite verses. I know there's a favorite verse, but I'm just saying that Proverbs 9 and 10 emphasizes the fear of the Lord, which every week we've talked about the fear of the Lord. But let me start with verse 8, and then we'll work our way down. Reprove not a scorner. NIV says, do not rebuke mockers. You ever seen anybody just stubborn? Yeah, they just stuck. Well, you know what? Well, some folks just won't listen. Uh, my mom used to say, uh, well, let me see, can I get in that? Because she said it a lot. She, uh, you know, she'd tell me what to do. I would politely ignore what she said. She said, okay, uh, a hard head. You know what I'm going to say. A hard head, let's uh, make a what? Woo, so behind. Hey, but she can say, but I don't love this thing. <laughs> a hard head. Make a sore behind. You know, you, maybe some people you try to counsel, you know, you try to 
encourage them to just don't listen. God give everybody free will. They ain't got to listen. You know, he gives them free will. He knows what they're going to do. But he does it. First Peter, no, it's Second Peter. Second Peter, chapter 3 and 9 say, you know, it's not God's will that anybody should perish. But some folk just will not listen. So just go on. It says here, he says, don't rebuke them because they hate you. Mm -hmm. However, a wise person, if you correct a wise person, they'll love you for it. Oh, wow. You know, I, I've had that happen. You know, somebody gave me constructive criticism. You know, Freddie, you need to go on. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you bringing that to my attention. That can improve me. Oh, thank you so much for adding that. Uh, a wise person will receive uh, will receive wisdom. Uh, verse uh, 9. Give instruct or instruct the wise and they will be wiser. Teach the righteous and they will add to their learning. You know, you're not too old to learn. We were just discussing about going back to school or whatever. You're never too old to learn. Of course. That wasn't, you'd be surprised how to add to your life. It will expand your mind, and more than that, it'll soften your heart to make you receive the things of God. Amen? Amen. And then verse 10, here we go, the fear of the Lord. Oh, I did want to talk about recognizing teachable moments. Often they occur, you know how some folks, oh, I don't know what they're all they're trying to tell. Well, you know what, oh, open, first of all, open your Bible. You probably can hear a little bit of and first of all, let's, let's, let's have a little talk with God every day. It'd be nice if you could speak to him every now and then. And then you could better hear. And so recognize teachable moments that occur in your life. Verse 10. The fear of the Lord <laughs> is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. Now, we talked about the fear at the very beginning of the month. The fear of the Lord, it, it does mean to be respectful. It does mean to be reverent, but it gets closer than that. All month long, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is wisdom, the fear of the Lord is knowledge, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. It comes up over and over again. The fear of the Lord is not only respecting God, but don't just put him on a pedestal. He's way over there up in the high of the sky somewhere. Hey, how about bringing God down here? Let him abide inside you. The fear of the Lord is relationship with God in every, every job. Don't say, well, God, that's good on Sunday. God is good, uh-huh. And he's surely, he surely is. But then when it comes to situations, we put God on the back, and we're going to handle our own situation. You think you can handle a situation better than God? I'm just asking. Maybe you can. I'm just asking. Can you handle your problems better than God? Maybe you can, but I have learned in my life. I was so much better off letting God take care of situations. That's right. The older I get, the better that is right there. Amen. Yeah, I got to the point where, you know what, if I get up and I fall, I swear they don't run. <laughs> don't, don't do that. I eat, oh, oh, no, no, no. God will help me and ask me to lean on. Just lean on the everlasting arms. You know, I get a little worked up sometimes. Mm -hmm. Those that know me, amen. Mm -hmm. Talking about the fear of the Lord and how y'all have a relationship. It's the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. That's just the beginning of it, huh? Amen, can you see? Uh, oh, three, now I'm old. I'm too old. No, 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 no. This is a real beginning. Amen. Yo, I find the walk with the Lord is. Just like the old Negro spirit, the old slaves you say about. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. And the verse says, every rain <laughs> goes higher and higher. Just when I thought I knew God at his best, guess what? He reveals even more. Mm -hmm. Our relationship becomes even deeper. That's right. And, uh, and, and it's just more sweeter. There was a day before. Amen. Amen. That's another God. So I'm just singing this all the Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge 
of the Holy One. Who is the Holy One? That's the Trinity being, being right there. The Holy One of God. We know it's Christ and His Holy Spirit is understanding. Understanding, discernment. The Holy Spirit will show it to you. Discernment. The Holy Spirit will give you, you know, that's a, that Romans 8 chapter, like I said, just been on my list uh, this week. I've been into it. Uh, verses 25, 26, it talks about the work of the Holy Spirit in your lives. You know, Jesus left us. He said in John 14, I will not leave you by yourself. He said, I will leave you, know, and the Holy Spirit will come to you and dwell with you. The Holy Spirit knows your groanings when you don't, when you can't pray. You don't know what words to say. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 8, 26 and 25 and 26, the Holy Spirit knows your groanings. Yeah. Yeah. The Holy Spirit gives you unction. And that's why I always say, the Holy Spirit gives me unction when I don't have gumption. Yeah. That's right. The Holy Spirit will tell you what to do, tell you what to say, how to act. You ain't by yourself. So there is the knowledge of the Holy One, the fear of the Lord. So finally, we get to meet the opposite. We've been introduced to Lady Wisdom. She's preparing. She's built her home on seven pillars. She's, uh, she's killing her beef. She got the food ready. She got the wine, got the good wine. Amen. And she sent out her, her maid servants and her herself. Goes out to the high place and she's calling. Lady Wisdom is calling to us. Well, come to the feast of the Lord. Come and learn and understand. Now, of course, where there's light, there's the opposite way. And here wow. is the opposite doctrine. Wow. Her name is Miss Father. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Miss Father. She's just the opposite. Let's read verses 13 through 18. Mm -hmm. A foolish woman is crying. <laughs> she is simple, no nothing. Verse 14, for she sitteth at the door of the house on a seat in high places of the day. Verse 14, uh, 15, to call passengers who go on their ways. 16, whoso is simple, let him turn to him. It is for him that one found his family should say unto him. Verse 17, stolen waters is sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. Mm -hmm. Verse 18, but he knows not that the dead are dead, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Miss Father. Miss Father. NIV. Miss Father is a clamorous. That means she's an unruly woman. Mm. She's loud and unnecessary. I always heard that an empty wagon makes a lot of banging noise. Say amen. And you know what? She don't know anything. She pretends she knows everything, don't know nothing. Verse 14 says, She sit at the door of her house. And she's also called. Mm -hmm. She's calling you. Verse up. 15 says she's calling out to those who pass by. And what is she saying to them? Then all of y'all that's uh, simple and naive coming to me. Come to my house. She's wow. alluring. Mm -hmm. And those who have no sense, it says in verse, 15, verse 14, they uh, said it. Those who have no sense, verse 16, those who do not have understanding go right into her trap. And when you get into her trap, Miss Father, she says in verse 17, stolen waters are sweet. She ain't, you know what? She didn't have any food prepared. She done stole her food. Mm. You know, we talk about the uh, the parable of the five uh, wise virgins and the foolish virgins. You know, the foolish virgins didn't have, didn't have any. Don't cut down there and they back it up. But they didn't have any oil. They want the wild bird to give, give me the oil. She ain't even got in the oil. They're wow. going to steal. Yeah. She had not killed her beast. She's going to steal somebody else. Mm -hmm. And see, eating bread in secret, let me give you a metaphor. Mm -hmm. It says stolen waters is sweet. Theologians teaches us that's a metaphor for having uh, uh, adulterous sex relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, when Mary commit adultery, that's what she did by Yeah, she did by the young folk. Ain't that something? That said, have intercourse. And uh, come on, uh, food eating in secret. You know what? Moses said, be sure. Whatever you do in secret, we'll come to light, be ah. sure. Huh? God will find you out. Yes. But little do they know. The time you turn into Miss 
Bye.